the cock 45 here your internet shooting companion is at the shooting table and I thought I'd shoot some 357 Magnum but before you can shoot you know what you have to do you have to load them up got two beauties here and uh, but, uh, yeah I'm gonna shoot both these guns and I thought while we had it, it might be interesting to just talk a little bit about the old 357 Magnum and the difference between the modern tactical version and the old beautiful classic version kind of a beauty and the beast thing here isn't it and uh, remember and let's see we've got sort of the beauty and the beast which should we shoot first any meeny mighty mo let's shoot the let's shoot the classic the beautiful classic and get it dirty i'm gonna pop that ut two liter right away Yee doggies i better stop doing that did you get the joke okay <laughs> Oh, uh, there's the Alabama two liter. Woo, doggies. And there's a cowboy. Oh, man. I just had six shots. No, I have another one. What's wrong with me? I just shot five. Yeah. Oh. That was a little tribute to Clint Eastwood. I didn't realize I just fired five. Okay. Yeah, that's the classic. Isn't it pretty? That's a beautiful gun. The Model 19. Huh. You know, it's just easy to lose your breath over that uh, that blue finish, the wood, the steel, you know, and, uh, and look at that. It even has the firing pin on the hammer. Wow. Don't see that anymore, do you, much? Okay. All right. Time for the beast. Oh, yeah. TRR8. Look at that thing. Beautiful rails, screw holes in the barrel, top and bottom. Is that gorgeous or what? <laughs> It's appropriate firing for today. It's so hot and humid. Oh man, let's just shoot a tin can with it. Wow, that was loud. My ears in tight. I'm gonna go double action on those two liters. Yeah. Uh oh. Click. All right, we had a round. That's the first time that's happened. And uh, I probably should have waited a little bit. I'm gonna put it right back in there. It got a light primer strike and I shouldn't have taken it right out. That's not happened yet with this gun. Uh, you know, one reason it did it though, if, it's, if you're gonna get a light primer strike, it's more likely to happen when, yeah, when you're firing double action. I'll try it again though, double action. Well, let's, let's try it again. Let's try it single action. <laughs> I'm gonna back it around and try it one more time. Single action. Click, okay. So that round is not gonna fire. And that's pretty amazing to me because I have fired a lot of factory ammo and a lot of federal. We've never had that, that happen that I can remember. So, so, uh, there you go. Even the best uh, ammo companies can have one round occasionally or get a bad primer. Uh, that probably wouldn't be your carry ammo, uh, but you know it's, it's good range ammo, that's for sure. And I guess you could hunt with that too. It's a good old 158 grain soft nose bullet. So anyway, that's not what the video is about, but uh, whatever happens in the video, that's what happens. So it's just got a bad primer. Got a bad primer again. What thing? How did I get that one so cut up? I don't know. Oh well. Anyway. Bad primer, yes, okay. Unless that chamber has an issue, and I haven't noticed that yet, so okay. So, enough of that, but anyway, what we are looking at mainly here is uh, just the difference between, you know, uh, firearms, and, and I thought while we had this, you know, most of us appreciate an old, you know, classic Smith & Wesson. That's kind of what we're talking about today, obviously, Smith & Wesson. And just a, a neat old, uh, you know, gun that's got a beautiful finish, big old wooden grips on it and everything. Uh, this one's not, doesn't quite go back to the pinned and recessed era, but it's, it's just, just a little bit later than that, I think just a couple of years. Uh, neat old gun, you know, uh, these things, you know, Bill Jordan was a proponent of this. And of course, Elmer Keith, the 357 Magnum, but Bill Jordan, the border patrolman, was uh, famous for wanting uh, this gun. I talked about that in some of our 357 Magnum videos 
the Model 19, you know, was being the, and he was a big guy, I think he was as big as John and me, uh, big as I am, he used proper grammar. He was as big as John and I are, how's that, he used proper grammar. But uh, he was a big guy, really big hands, maybe even larger than mine. But he, he thought that a uh, firearm this size, K-frame, and 357 Magnum would be the ideal uh, revolver for law enforcement specifically, because that's what he was into. And so uh, we've talked about that in other videos. And uh, you know, the Model 19, the Combat Magnum, uh, just, just a wonderful gun, a beautiful firearm. Well, the 357 has evolved, hasn't it? And this is a relatively <laughs> newer offering from Smith & Wesson. It's been a few years, I think five, six, seven years. I don't know how long the TRR-8 specifically has been out, but this is one of them. You've got a scandium frame. Wow. When uh, they were making the Model 19s back in the you know, 70s and 80s, back then at least, nobody knew what a scandium frame was. I don't know if anybody knew what scandium was. Uh, you know, and then, of course, your barrel with rails and all that kind of thing. Wow. And the other thing is, this is an end frame, but it holds eight rounds. Uh, so it's a high-capacity version, you know, of the 357 Magnum. It's still in a revolver, you know, the same basic action. That hasn't changed, really, although you have the firing pin mounted on the frame. It's a frame-mounted firing pin. Got your nice lock keyhole there, you know, one of the differences, isn't it? And uh, matte finish, you don't have a beautiful finish on it. You got a big old heavy looking ugly barrel, even though it came out of the Performance Center. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's just a different type of firearm. You know, rubber grip, ugly rubber grip. Of course, ugly's in the eye of the beholder. But as you look at the various features, you know, one is just a really nice firearm, looks good, feels good. The other one feels good, <laughs> it shoots well but it just doesn't look as good does it so anyway you got kind of beauty and the beast you got tactical versus uh, a classic of course in this day this was a tactical yeah you would have classified this because a lot of uh, police especially i think state patrolmen patrol women whatever carried uh, a model 19. it was a very popular uh, handgun for state uh, troopers around the country you know for a period of time i guess that would have been in especially the like the well i'm thinking 70s you know maybe even 80s to, to an extent but you know before that too i guess just a really nice revolver it's impossible to not like a model 19 357 magnum but uh, again it's it's kind of old school a lot of us love those old school revolvers you know with the hammer mounted firing pin the beautiful finish and everything but there's a there's a lot to be said for something like this isn't there and we've been shooting this thing. Well, today's the first bobble we've had, apparently a bad primer. It's the, uh, you know, it's the first bobble we've had with it. And we've, uh, we've shot it a fair amount now. This is about the third different video that we've done with it. I'm not sure what order you'll see them in, but I'd like it as a shooter. We even did, uh, uh, which you might've seen already if it's posted, but it may not have been posted. So if it hadn't been posted yet, you probably have not seen it. It's, uh, I did a long range uh, video in range two with the thing and actually hit a few targets with it. Uh, I just felt like uh, it, it was accurate enough in my hand that I could, uh, you know, hit a few of those targets. And I, I did hit a few of them. I hit some misses. Uh, so it's just a nice revolver. Very functional, very functional, but not necessarily a pretty gun, right? And I, I just couldn't help thinking, we've had this thing for I don't know, a couple of weeks. And as I stand here and sweat all over it, pers excuse me, perspire, ladies, I, I couldn't help, you know, think uh, from time to time, wow, this is a good shooter. And I'm kind of a revolver guy, you know, I'm kind of an everything guy, right? I like all of them. But, uh, you know, I, I think of my Model 29, my beautiful Model 29, my beautiful Model 19, and, and uh, I guess some other Smiths I have, even in stainless, uh, that are kind of older. You know, it just, it just ain't one of them, you know. It, it's not the kind of revolver, oh man, good old Smith & Wesson, what a nice revolver. It, it's a beautiful gun. You don't get that feeling when you handle it, you know, like you do with one of these, you know, where you're proud to take it out of your range bag at the range and show folks, look what I brought today. I brought one of the jewels out to, to shoot, you know, and people want to come and see it and maybe shoot it. Uh, well, you may get the same reaction with this. At least people wanted to shoot it. They're not going to walk over probably and say, what a beautiful gun. 
Uh, so the difference is here, all right, you've got higher capacity. Uh, obviously, if you're going into combat tomorrow with the revolver, and I did talk about that in the, in the video we did on this with uh, how it was uh, kind of came about as a, uh, like a SWAT revolver, believe it or not, for the point man on an entry team. And, and why, you know, if you haven't seen that, go look at that video. Uh, and so this one is very, very functional. And if you were going to battle tomorrow and you had to take a revolver, uh, this would probably be your better choice. Yeah, it, for one thing, the capacity. Uh, it's a lot when you're talking about eight versus six and it's I haven't weighed these two I, you know it doesn't feel any heavier really and the capability of putting a rail on it, and all those ugly things that don't matter if you're going to battle right you're going into a situation where pretty doesn't mean a lot function means everything you don't mind having a, a flashlight attached to it or a toaster whatever you might need right a red dot a rail up here with a big red dot or some kind of optic on it it just doesn't matter if it's needed. And uh, so, and I'll have to say, as much as I like the classic Smith & Wessons, I would be one if I had to go to battle tomorrow with a revolver, uh, 357, maybe any revolver I own. You know, this, I don't own this one, but this, this would probably be my first choice. You know, eight shots. And I've, I've proven to myself, shooting it a fair amount here, that I can shoot this thing double action as well as any revolver I have and uh you know it's the right color i guess and it, it's got a big old beautiful rubber grip but it, it really fills your hand and it absorbs the recoil that in the heavy barrel and you know you can get ammo that will really do the job with a 357 magnum that ammo any any normal uh velocity i guess ammo a 357 has an incredible reputation so this would be my choice yeah uh because if you need something to to function uh, that's what takes uh, priority over over beauty. Okay, so I would take this beast. You know, you got your eight shots, you got your adjustable sights, got that nice uh, little uh, insert, uh, brass insert, and in I don't think that's gold. Uh, if it is, I might take it out before this goes back to Buzz and take it to a pawn shop and sell that. <laughs> No, I think it's just a, a brass. And, uh, you know, your functional rubber grips and, and uh, just, just everything about it, it's a, it's, a, it's a dandy. It really is. It's not too heavy because that's scandium frame. So, you know, function can be very important. And, uh, and this one wins out in that regard, whereas this one wins out in just beauty. And, you know, you're, again, your frame-mounted, your hammer-mounted firing pin, your classic cylinder latch there. I love that. Uh, the nice finish on it, the bluing. You know, and those, those old Smith & Wesson grips, uh, they fill your hand, they, they feel great to me. You know, and the, the red ramp front sight, just a nice old revolver, one you'd be proud to go shoot. So, just kind of a little comparison uh, how how different uh, firearms can be, you know, as time passes and, and, and how tastes change. If, if I had been around, and any of us that are, are my age or close to it, in the 70s or the 80s, Got to quit dripping. Well, this one I can drip sweat on it all I want to, right? Uh, if, if in the 80s or 70s we had seen this lying in a, in a sh on a shelf in a, in a gun shop, you know, we'd, what the heck is that? Who would buy that? I mean, who would even want to think about that? You know, it's just the most, that's the ugliest gun on the planet, ugliest revolver on the planet, because there really weren't ugly revolvers that I remember at that time. Uh, but times change and tastes change. And then, depending on the function and how a firearm is going to be used, you know, it makes a difference. So I'm going to shoot them one more time. Uh, and uh, let's just, I, maybe they're dirty, I might as well, right? Just one more time and I'll let you go and get to dinner, get to lunch, get to breakfast, whatever it might be. Uh, so, you know, it's a matter of form versus function in a lot of ways. Let's load them both again. And, uh, and then she that cylinder looks uh, kind of puny, just hold six. You know, I've got the 686 Plus that holds seven too, so it's almost now we're having to get used to a, a revolver that just holds six rounds. It seems odd. Let's shoot this one first this time. All right. Put a couple on the tree. I'll put a couple on this target, and then we'll go to the tree. Woo! Get those ears in. All right. Click. 
Good shooter. Like I say, I would take it to battle. I really would. Heck, I'd take this one. <laughs> All right, who hadn't been? Oh, there's a cowboy that's unscathed. <laughs> now he's not unscathed. All right, pretty cool. Both of them are empty, at least empty cases. So uh, tactical versus classic, uh, there's something to like about both of them. I don't know if that's any help to you. It, it might be, mostly kind of for fun. Just, you know, the, the evolution of the revolver and, and, and what we consider as a viable option today just kind of interests me. But you might be looking for a revolver and you're not sure whether you want something like this, a newer, more, more I don't know, functional or tactical. And, you almost hate to say tactical with a revolver. It wouldn't have to be this tactical, maybe. But you're, you're thinking about something that is matte black or, or whatever versus this, and you really like these, and it is kind of a tough choice. I suggest you get both, you know, but because uh, they both do have their, their place. Anyway, you know, I like revolvers. I like 357 Magnum, 38 Special, and, uh, and uh, I enjoyed shooting these things today. I'm glad you came by, and we appreciate your support. Uh, you folks over on uh, the Gong Club on our Patreon account, appreciate your support. We appreciate everybody watching and uh, all the folks that support us. We appreciate you supporting them. Okay, they make a big difference in the firearms we can get and the ammo we can get. And it's just, uh, it helps us have fun and we enjoy bringing it to you all. Really, really do. That's why we do it. Life is good. Hmm, that's not bad. Oh, hey, just measuring this 15 shot group. Um, since I've got you here, I want to remind you to check out our friends over SDI and Talon Grips. SDI is a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can become associate, get an associate's degree in firearms technology or become certified in gunsmithing. So check them out at sdi.edu. They also accept GI Bill, so be aware of that. Talon Gun Grips, uh, you may be aware of those. Uh, Dad's been using them for a long time. Essentially a grip tape that goes around the grip of your handgun just like this around the grip and uh, gives you a much better grip and you're not stuck with basically the grip that comes from the factory um, on the pistol uh, because it's not like the old days with 1911s where you just change out the grips a lot of these more po uh, uh, modern handguns don't give you that option so you have to either just stick with what you got or wrap something around the outside so check them out if it makes sense for you. And also, don't forget to go to our website, Hickok45.com. We have a bunch of stuff over there for you guys to check out. Uh, we actually have our videos now on Gunstreamer.com, so please check that out. Don't forget about our social media. Don't forget to look in the description also. There's a lot of information there. The description of the video and the website, Hickok45.com. But our social media at the real Hickok45 on Instagram, Hickok45 on Facebook and Twitter. Um, there's John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram, but you can't guess who that is. Um, what else? I think, I think that's all I was going to tell you guys. Oh, yeah, our merchandise. You can find our merchandise at BunkerBranding.com. We have this shirt, at least as I'm making this video available. Um, and we've got some hats. Just go, just go check it out. It's going to change what we have available at different times. So if you like something, maybe go ahead and jump on it. Uh, but the main thing is Hickok45.com and, and support the people who support us whenever it makes sense for you. And as always, I really appreciate you guys still watching these videos after so long and, and so many years. It means so much to us and it's been uh, such a fun experience. And we appreciate you guys and see you later.